Bonjour les amis, bienvenue à Vincennes. Bonjour, bienvenue. The tour is about to start. Hop on the coach. Welcome to France with Vero. Look at the gorgeous blooms. I'm going to start walking to give everybody time to arrive. This gentleman is a bit of a local celebrity, King Saint Louis, Louis the Nine. We'll mention him a little later. He greets most visitors into Vincennes. It's going to be a hopping scene today. The weather is gorgeous. There are a lot of people out. And I am taking you to a very popular place in the Bois de Vincennes. So expect to see some Parisian street life. I am walking along the Avenue du Général de Gaulle. There's always one wherever you go in France, as you know. Bonjour et bienvenue. We are strolling around the Bois de Vincennes today in the eastern outskirts of Paris. I'm walking along until everybody gets here. Some nice blooms, even though the, the trees are pretty young here. Bonjour, bonjour tout le monde. Happy to step outside of the big city for a change. We've been traveling around the former villages in Paris the last few weeks and months, from the 17th arrondissement through the 18th, 19th, 20th, where we were last week in Belleville. And today we are definitely outside Paris. We have crossed the peripheric, the beltway, something many Parisians don't like to do, though I suspect they make an exception to come here. Because here in Vincennes, they can find the fresh air, the space, the shade in the summer that is nearly impossible to find in downtown Paris, especially when we have big crowds down there. Earlier this week, I introduced you to two local residents who arrived in January here. Their names are Sapristi and Saperlipopette. They are two huge sheep and their job in theory is to mow the grass. Do you see them in their little shed there? They're snoozing. These are very low energy sheep. I don't know how they're going to get the job done. They're always either sleeping or munching or digesting. But hopefully they will complete their mission. Actually, let's do this so you can see the beautiful chapel because we won't be able to see it from the other side. This chateau, we are outside of the Chateau de Vincennes, a celebrity of sorts, but I think a celebrity that should get more recognition, especially with visitors. And I will tell you why in a minute. This is the highest keep in Europe, le donjon du Chateau de Vincennes. And you will see over there, take a peek here at what is known as La Sainte Chapelle, the Holy Chapel, renovated in the last few years. It's absolutely gorgeous. So let's keep walking so we can walk around a little bit and take a closer look at the chateau, or what's left of it. Bonjour à tous et bienvenue les amis. Thank you for being here. It's so bright. It's a lovely day. It feels exactly like summer today. Here's a nice view for you. How about this? 
One of the reasons you want to come to Vincennes, located in the eastern outskirts of Paris, but very easy to reach. You're less than 15, 20 minutes away from Paris here. One of the reasons you want to come here is to see this chateau. You know how Par people go to Paris and they walk around the city looking for signs of medieval times when in fact there aren't that many left because during the big remodel, as I call it, of the late 19th century, undertaken by Baron Haussmann and Napoleon III, so much of medieval Paris disappeared. Unbeknownst to many of them, this is where medieval Paris survives. This is what a medieval chateau looked like. And this one, look at the moat. Imagine it filled with water. And this is where some prisoners were kept over the centuries, some very famous prisoners, in fact. And even though the chateau has changed a lot, the high walls that used to surround it with many towers were taken down eventually by Napoleon I, you can still get a feel for what a medieval fortress used to look like. In fact, this is the best place. This is the best place to picture what the Bastille was like before it was torn down at the start of the French Revolution in 1789. Because as you stand here, right outside the Chateau de Vincennes and the moat here, you can really see the size, the magnificence, the size of those walls and their height. It's just so impressive. You can go inside, you can actually visit it. And I recommend if you do that you take a tour or at least do your research and read some articles online so you understand the different stages of the construction of this chateau and what happened to it. Yes, it's, it's open for viewing, but only sections. The, you can see the chapel, the beautiful chapel, certainly. It's been remodeled. You can, all see, you can also visit the dungeon. The dungeon was under construction for many years and it reopened, I'd say, less than 10 years ago. You see how clean it is? So I try to take you to places that are off the much beaten Parisian path. And I seriously don't understand why more people don't come here. I know Vincennes is out there now. People start to come, they come and see the chateau. But really, this is a fabulous place to see what a medieval fortress looked like that also was a royal residence for a long time. You see these uh, newer looking buildings? There are two of them facing each other. The king and the queen's um, sections of the, ca of the chateau. And these were actually added in the 17th century for Louis XIV, the Sun King. And that was before he decided to move the court to Versailles. So I'm not exaggerating when I say it was a royal residence through the Middle Ages and later even. French kings, emperors, leaders lived here on and off. And some of them really liked it, really felt safe here. One of them was Louis IX, Saint Louis. We saw his statue earlier. Uh, Charles V, Charles V, who built a wall around Paris after Philip Augustus and protected the eastern side of Paris with a big structure known as the Bastille. Charles V lived here too. So there's a lot of history here to explore. I'm going to give you a nice peek at the chapel again because it's really magnificent. Bonjour et bonjour, if you just joined us. Thank you for being here. I hope the sound is good for you. There's a little bit of wind. You can see people strolling inside. Here's a great view of the chapel. It's called La Sainte Chapelle. And uh, bonjour Larry, bonjour les amis. La Sainte Chapelle was built and um, before the other Sainte Chapelle, you know, in downtown Paris, in fact. And um, it hosted the relics that uh, King Louis IX, who became Saint Louis, brought back from Constantinople, including the famous thorn, the crown of thorns. Uh, it ended up where, at, in Paris, on the Ile de la Cité, where he built the Sainte Chapelle, everybody knows. But for a while, the crown of thorns, when it arrived, was here. So there is a lot to see and discover here when you come to Vincennes. Now, this is just a little bit about the chateau, but don't stop at the chateau. Vincennes is a lot like Versailles. 
In Versailles, people go and see the chateau, but it's a fabulous city. Okay, so it's twice the size of Vincennes. About 50,000 people live in Vincennes, in case you're wondering. Vincennes is, I think, Versailles is probably more than twice that. But it's a city that grew around the chateau, just like this one. And people live very happy lives in Vincennes. Some of them don't even go downtown during the week because you have everything here. You have excellent boulangerie, pastry shops, chocolatiers, you have shopping, boutiques. You have a chateau, but most importantly, you have the amazing, incredible green space that's facing us right now, Le Bois de Vincennes. Le Bois de Vincennes and this chateau have been part of Parisian and French history for over a thousand years. So I do think they deserve a visit, don't you? Thank you for confirming the sound is good. That helps. Thank you. Happy to see you all. This, I mean, the weather couldn't be more perfect. The only drawback is that the light is totally blinding me and I'm having a hard time. So look at the zoo. This is what Vincennes, you would never know we're in semi-lockdown. This is what Vincennes always looks like on the weekends on a sunny day. Look at the, car, look at the cars, look at the bicycles. You might even have some coaches. If we had tourists in town, you might find some coaches. It's a very happening place. In fact, crossing over there is going to be a lot of fun. So the Bois, Le Bois de Vincennes is roughly all over there, all over there. We're talking about 2,000 acres, friends, the largest green space in Paris, three times the size of Central Park, if you want a comparison point, or even better, combine together some of your favorite arrondissements in Paris, some of them along the Seine River. So let's say the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth arrondissement. If you combine them all, you have the size of the Bois de Vincennes. Ah, I see we have some tardies, huh? Well, I'll be a nice teacher and let you in anyway. You would not need to go to the principal's office and pick a special paper. How about that? I'm in a good mood today. It's a gorgeous day. It's warm. So this building here and the one facing facing it on the other side are the queen and king's apartments or wings that were added in the 17th century for Louis the 14th and his court. Pretty much once Louis the 14th decided that Versailles was it and he built his dream place there, most French kings, nobody ever lived here again. With the exception of Louis the 15th, his successor, when his great granddad died, very old, Louis the 14th, Louis XV came here and lived here for a while and he did a lot of work on the Bois de Vincennes and he's the first ruler who opened it to the public. And that was in the 17th century, uh, sorry, in the 18th century. Louis XV. But Napoleon I was here. Napoleon III was here as well. They all came here. Ah, I'm sorry, it's raining where you are. Here it certainly isn't. Look at this old drawbridge that's being completely remodeled. This has been going on for months. I was here months ago and they were already working on it. Look how clean the stone is. Look how pretty it is. So you have different influences in terms of architecture in the chateau and when you take a tour um, they will explain everything to you who was here, the different kings, the people who got uh, thrown in jail here, who got executed. There are a lot of good stories to tell. The French flag you see over here sits on the top of the keep that we just walked by. It's the, the tallest keep in Europe. Oh yes, there is always a Napoleon connection, Lisa, always. Napoleon actually is the one who destroyed the walls and some of the medieval towers that surrounded this to make some room. Eventually the, ca the chateau and the woods, the Bois de Vincennes, had more of a military role and some of it is still ongoing today. You still have some military action around here, training grounds. In fact, across from me, this beautiful building in the distance is one of the places where um, an elite corps of the Gendarmerie Nationale, who belongs to the, that belongs to the French army, um, 
is uh, la garde républicaine. Those are gendarmes who ride horses. You see them when we have big events like the July 14th parade. This is their training grounds over there and you see them patrol throughout the park. So the military presence is still here in many ways. Look at all these people. I certainly hope not everyone is using their phones at the same time in there because otherwise the connection is not going to be great. But we will make the best of it as always. One last peek at the chateau and the chapel, La Sainte Chapelle, right behind it. I'm going to lift my arm up a little so you can see better. But I'm very short, so I'm sure it does make a very big difference. <laughs> Thanks for being here, friends. This is a glorious day in Paris, and we are out and about in the eastern out outskirts of the city, a city named Vincennes. And that city is so easy to get to. There are so many day trips people embark on from Paris to go see fabulous chateaus in the Ile de France. And they have to ride, to ride trains for at least an hour or two. This one is 20 minutes away from downtown Paris on Metro Line 1. So easy to get to. And then you have the great city to explore and the fabulous place where I'm taking you now. So make sure to pay Vincennes a visit. You will not regret it. The reason I speak so highly of it, I'm going to run to make this one. Merci, merci. The reason I speak so highly of it is because out of my 12 or 13 years in Paris over the years, I've probably spent 50% of my time here in this area. I lived here with my family as a student. I lived here later as a young professional. I got engaged in this area. And when I relocated from the United States two years ago, this is where I lived in a tiny little studio. Some of you know as the seventh heaven under Parisian rooftops. Here is the entrance to one of the big popular sites here. It says Parc Floral de Paris. This is part of the uh, botanical gardens of Paris. There are four major sites. Two are west of here near the Bois de Boulogne. The other two are here and this is one of them. So I thought I would bring you here today. We won't be strolling much around the Bois de Vincennes because it's so big that really we wouldn't be able to cover that much in 45 minutes or 50 minutes. So I thought I'd take you to one of the sites that Parisians actually go to and in recent years visitors as well. There is a lot going on in this Parc Floral part of the botanical gardens, lots of different spaces. If you're interested in bird watching, come in the morning, it's quieter. If you're interested in plants, do the same. On weekends, families take to, <laughs> tend to take over. Uh, but it's a great place if you want to see, if you want to watch locals at play. And I think a lot of you are interested in that, which is why I did that today. Because it's all good to talk about history, but you also want to see how Parisians live today when they're not downtown sitting at cafes. Of course, we don't have cafes anymore, am I right? So I guarantee you, we will be seeing a lot of kids. If for any reason the connection drops, don't go anywhere. I will be back up as soon as I can. Now, this is Paris for you, even during a semi-lockdown, lines. Lines to get in everywhere. You see this line? Look at that. I'm sure most of the festivals are not going to be happening anytime soon. I will mention a couple of popular ones in this park, but look at this line. Oh no, what are we going to do? It's going to take 30 minutes just to get in. Or maybe we have a ticket that was printed early and maybe that'll help. And if not, I'll take you somewhere else. <laughs> Here we go. Knock on wood, friends. Bonjour. Pardon? Ah bon, c'est pas ce qu'on m'a dit la dernière fois. Je scanne là? C'est bon là? Là? Oui, 
Là bas, celle là. Merci, monsieur. Welcome to France. They told me to do something on Tuesday. You show up on Saturday, and it's different. So now I am actually cutting the line. Pardon. Ils m'ont envoyé ici. Désolé. Ah, bonjour, monsieur. D'à côté, m'ont envoyé là. Attendez ici. Puis il termine. Oui. Après vous venez. D'accord. Ça marche. Après je présente. Merci, monsieur. All right. So we're going to be right after these nice people, and then we'll be able to get in. See, even if you plan ahead, even if you plan ahead. So the entrance fee is two euros fifty per adult. That's less than three dollars, and it's one fifty per child. And you can get an annual membership. Uh, it's you only pay between um, from April. Bonjour, madame. Merci beaucoup. Da da. Victory. We have a ticket. Parc Floral de Paris. Ta 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 ta. So yeah, you only pay from April, the beginning of April, all the, to the end of October. And then the best part about it is they actually leave all these gates open and there are other entrances as you walk around. So you can come year round. When I lived in the area until six months ago, I would come here in, the, in November, December. Of course, it's a lot quieter then. Nobody's here in the morning and you have the place all to yourself and it's free. So this is a pretty massive place. It's about... I wonder if it's 60 to 80 acres. And remember, this is part of the botanical uh, gardens of Paris. So it's going to try and teach people about, you know, biodiversity. There are different themed areas. There's a shadow from the tree there, not, not ideal. So right now in France, when you arrive somewhere, always look for the little red sign that says, vous êtes ici, you are here. <laughs> Your restrooms are indicated, always good. Though some of them were closed. You have a big lake, we will see that. We're gonna kind of do this, walk around like this so we can come back to the lake where we will wrap up. I'm not going to get too deep in it because this is where all the kids play areas are and it will be a zoo. So I'm hoping we could see some flowers. We have a few things in bloom right now. Does that sound, does that sound good to everyone? Thank you for being here. So yeah, beautiful trees. Now this section of the Bois de Vincennes used to be military training grounds actually. And in 1959, so we just uh, celebrated, uh, wait, 1969, sorry. We just celebrated last year the 50th anniversary of the Parc Floral, part of the Botanical Gardens of Paris, which is kind of cool. So you have signs everywhere. They tell you, you know, where you're headed. You can pick and choose. A bit of a zoo on the weekends, but a lovely place uh, throughout the week. If you'd like to come in the morning, early afternoon, it's pretty quiet. You can have uh, picnics. Because I lived nearby for 18 months when I first relocated two years ago, I was very lucky to spend a lot of time here was my exercise, especially during the lockdown. It so helped. So I'm going to try and show you the best sections, but keep in mind, we'll only see a few. So you'll need time to explore this. Now the Bois de Vincennes is famous for many things. Locals certainly come for this, for the Parc Floral. They also come for one of the four lakes here. Uh, there are four artificial lakes that were added during the Second Empire by Napoleon III. The most famous one is the Lac d'Omenil. And it's very much, if you go to the Parc des Buttes Chaumont, it will make you think or re will remind you of Les Buttes Chaumont. Very romantic English style park. And a lot of people go there because you can access it with Metro Line 8 from the 12th arrondissement. Uh, there are no real rose gardens here. There are sections with roses, but if you want to see the best rose garden, the best rose garden in Paris is also part of the Paris Botanical Garden, and it is called Les Jardins de Bagatelle, where a chateau is as well, and that's inside the Bois de Boulogne. So it, to, to, there's in fact an international competition rewarding the most beautiful roses in the world there. So two of the sections of the botanical gardens are west 
of Paris and uh, Les Jardins de Bagatelle is uh, the place where you go for the rose garden. So you have little, I call them univers, little universes or little worlds that they have created. And this is one of my favorites because you have medicinal plants here. So you have a lot of herbs and it smells wonderful. And because it's a botanical garden, you have tags everywhere. Here is in fact a beautiful rose. Look at that. This one's a climbing rose. It's a little early for the blooms and then signs everywhere that tell you what you're looking at so you can learn something. Here you have a library. Of course, the books will be dedicated to nature. It's a lovely place. It really is. You could spend a day here and not be bored. They have a couple of little restaurants, not grand food. You can bring your own picnic as well. They're not picky. So it's, it's lovely. Oh, here's a section that says plant medicinal, you see? So a lot of these plants have been used for a really long time. A lot of these herbs, uh, including in the Middle, age, middle Ages when the the Bois de Vincennes was used extensively, but for other things like hunting by French kings. Uh, we used to have a place in Paris where you could see this type of plants and learn from them. It was the gardens of the Musée de Cluny, the Cluny, the Hotel de Cluny, you know, the Museum of the Middle Ages that's currently closed. Sadly, the gardens have been closed for several years now, but this was the place where you went downtown and you could learn about medicinal plants and herbs. Here is oregano. You see, you have the Latin names. Lavandula, this is a lavender, I think. This one's in bad shape. The time needs a little help there, bud. And so Parisians come here because you know, you can just step away from Paris in the summer when Paris gets crowded and hot and muggy. This is a place where you can come and it's so big. You don't need to be in the botanical garden. You could be anywhere in the Bois de Vincennes, find your own little place, especially if you explore and find secret alleyways, and then you would be by yourself practically. And this is a luxury for Parisians who live in a crowded city. So they either do that or they go to that big lake I told you about, which is in another section of the Bois. Look how pretty this is. Look at this. Look at that. Yeah, I know some of your gardeners, you probably recognize some of what some of the plants we've seen here. Look how old this tree is. This is really old. It's been here for a while. They have some pretty rare trees here. So you have about 20 pavilions. A lot of the pavilions uh, have um, parts to play normally. Right now, most of them are closed. There's a big place too for exhibits and they can privatize a lot of the buildings. So people, companies will rent out some of the buildings. Let's go this way. I might get lost just as a heads up because there are lots of alleyways and pathways. So don't, don't be surprised if I retrace my steps and decide to go back <laughs> somewhere. It looks different when there are a lot of people too. It was quieter when I was here earlier. Hope you're enjoying this stroll. Over 320 people here, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I know you have other options on Saturdays. Lots of people live streaming these days, so thank you for being here. All right, this is a place we'll see from the other side, so I'm not gonna stay here a long time, but this is a pretty cool place. Do you see this? So the Parc Floral is super popular in the summer because what you see over there is a place where they have bleachers and a stage. And so they have a very, very uh, big international jazz festival. Lots of uh, famous people come here and sing. And then they have other type of concerts and events. So we will, this is about where we, we will walk around and wrap up over there. So you'll see it better. There's also a famous fountain, a bit of a monumental fountain, kind of contemporary, but it's not running right now. How about I go, let's see, where's my, I'll go left. A gauche. Who's coming? I'm going à gauche. So here again, they uh, tell you what kind of plants you have, you see? 
uh, bonsai, regional plants, irises. Oh yeah, they have a huge collection of irises. Um, the evolution pathway, medicinal plants, we just went there. Jardin des Senteurs, the nice, the one that smells really nice. And they always remind you where you are, which is really cool. So you can't really get lost. It's crowded, but it's not too bad. I am betting that tomorrow will be worse on Sunday. We've had a spring break for two weeks. So kids have been around at home with their parents for two weeks. Not many people have gone away this time. And so uh, it's been crazy. I know a lot of parents who are going really nuts. They're going back to school though. Or are they? I forgot what the new uh, regulations are. I forgot if they're going back next week or if they're ho at home for one more week. It's possible that they're at home again. I forgot, it changes all the time. I don't have a little one anymore, so mine is older now, he's in the US. All right, so you have two restaurants in the park. This is one of them. Look at the line. Look at the line and I bet I know what they're buying. The food is more like pizza and hamburger, hamburgers, but most people will come here for the ice cream. Um, this is what they're lining up for here. And usually you would be allowed to sit out here, so it's kind of nice to take a break, sit in the shade, you have a drink, but it's to go only, right? You know the drill. Welcome to 2021. I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. There we go. Ahead of us is uh, what's a pretty typical park. I don't know if they're French tacos. I didn't see the menu. I only saw hamburgers. Uh, Guignol. Guignol is this famous puppet. This little gentleman with a weird looking hat and a stick in his hand that was born a long time ago in the city of, uh, of Lyon. And uh, most Parisian parks, the big ones, have a puppet theater and have had them for decades. So Guignol tells us, fermé jusqu'à nouvel ordre, closed indefinitely, à très bientôt, see you very soon. Poor Guignol, they even banned Guignol, I tell you. Not good. If you just joined us, welcome. We are, today we left the big city, we crossed the périphérique with Metro Line 1 and we exited at the last stop on Metro Line 1, which is called Vincennes, Chateau de Vincennes. We walked past the beautiful chateau, we talked about it for a while, and then we entered one of the most beautiful sections of the massive Bois de Vincennes, which is known as Le Parc Floral, part of the Botanical Gardens of Paris. A little later, I will be taking friends with Vero Club members on a second stroll to a very small intimate corner of the Bois de Vincennes where many people never go and that is one of my favorites so that's where I'll be taking them on YouTube. You, you can purchase an annual pass so it's easier to get in and you don't have to line up but or you can do what I did which was to purchase your ticket online and then they just need to scan it and you're in. Two euros fifty per adult. How about we go in here? We might be able to spot some roadies. Rody season is wrapping up. Let's see if we can... Uh, pardon? Here's one. Oh, no, that's a camellia, isn't it? That's a camellia. Ooh, beautiful Japanese maple. Look at this baby here. Isn't that beautiful? Here's a rody, but it's almost done. Yeah, if you get your tickets online, be warned, it's a clunky website. Lots of French websites are clunky. Here's a pretty one. You see? All right, let's go around here. And uh, now is as good a time as any to say a quick little hello. Bonjour. If you haven't met me yet, Vero live streaming today from Vincennes in the eastern outskirts of Paris. A bit of a change of pace uh, based on what we did. I'm going to turn around so you can see what I'm looking at here. Bit of a change of pace because we've been uh, 
We've been traveling around the northeastern neighborhoods of uh, Paris, the former villages of Paris, former working class neighborhoods. And so I thought today the weather has been so nice. It'd be nice to actually step outside and uh, get reacquainted with nature, if you will. So welcome. Bienvenue, les amis. Okay. Do you see those beautiful pine trees? Look how tall they are. These are the original trees that were here in Le Bois when they opened the park or before they opened the park in 1969. So uh, these trees they have kept and they kind of lined up in an alleyway and it's part of the and t different types of sections they've created. <gasps> this is a magnolia. This is pretty. Oh, thank you. No, no, no. Vous ne me gênez pas, mais c'est gentil, merci. Regardez, look at these beautiful colors. Look at that. We have some pink and purple, we have some red. Well, thank you for considering hiring me for tours, but I don't know if you've heard my news that I shared on Facebook this week, a couple of days ago, actually yesterday. I'm going to be moving out of Paris, away from Paris in a few days. I am moving to the beautiful city of Tours in the heart of the Loire Valley. It is really the gateway to the Loire Valley, that beautiful region you've probably heard about or visited when there are so many chateaux and things to see, great food, great wine. So the good news is I'll only be an hour away by TGV from Paris. So I'll keep a foot in, here in Paris because my parents live here. But uh, I may not be able to lead a lot of tours in Paris anymore because I will be living in the Loire Valley starting in a couple of weeks. Bonjour Jen, bienvenue. It's okay to be late. You can catch the replay. You should in fact, because we've covered some ground. So yeah, so you see those little alleyways are a little quieter. So even if it's crowded and you come on a weekend, you can uh, explore and step away. And this applies to the whole Bois de Vincennes, in fact. Don't stay on the big alleyways lined with trees that were added by Louis XV in the 18th century. Just pretend you're hiking, go inside the woods and just follow the little pathways there. That's the fun thing to do. All right. Ah. You can see the sign. This is a typical sign in many Parisian parks. At least it used to be. Pelouse interdite au public. The grass is prohibited. Well, guess what? It is 2021 and people have been doing whatever the heck they please. They please because they have no cafes, no restaurants, only their apartments. And so <laughs> <laughs> they do whatever. In fact, this grass looks pretty healthy, unlike other parks in Paris that have been worn down already. Thank you for being here, for joining us. Even if you're a little late, no worries. You can always catch the replay later. So the Bois de Vincennes was former hunting grounds. It started in the Middle Ages, more than a thousand years ago. You had French kings who came here to hunt. And they, uh, they built a chateau, which was a hunting lodge. Sounds familiar. That's how Versailles started as well. And then it became a medieval fortress. And then they built walls around it. And then they kept building and building. And many kings and dignitaries either lived or visited there. And this is how it was, it, it was all started. And eventually a small village and then a city grew first inside the chateau and then outside the chateau. And that city is called Vincennes. The name came to be uh, in the years that followed the French Revolution, in fact. Until then, it wasn't called Vincennes. It will always be one of my favorite places in Paris. When I think of Paris and home, it's always Vincennes. It's always Le Bois de Vincennes. Had I been able to purchase an apartment in Vincennes when I started looking a year ago, I would have gladly done so, but Vincennes is as expensive as Paris, as some of the nicer arrondissements in Paris are. Uh, you need to go farther out in this beautiful area of Paris called Le Val de Marne to find slightly lower prices, but you need, that means you need to step away from the city center, which I really didn't want to do, though I love a lot of these cities. I've already taken you there along the Marne River, 
a tributary of the Seine. So it didn't work out in my case, but because I've lived in Paris for 12 or 13 years on and off, I don't think I'm going to be missing out. I know Paris pretty well, and I'm very excited about the new adventure in the Loire Valley in the beautiful city of Tours. I'm facing the sun here, but just want to show you this is a theater. So we have a lot going on, the puppet shows, the theater, the music festivals outdoor in the summer. So on the left, the kids you can hear are playing because this is the area with all the play structures. In fact, deep that way, they have, a, they have this place called Acrobranche. I have no idea what it's called in English. It's, you know, this type of a course that they do up in the trees with uh, harnesses and and uh, cables and people just go slide down and wearing helmets so this is a popular area so now look at the zoo here i'm not i'm not taking you there this is not too many people this is the area for kids so you have play structures on the right you have play structures and climbing structures on the left and would you look at that crowd ropes courses thank you missy that's what they call acrobranche in the U.S. then, huh? So, I am not going there because it's too crowded and I l love you all very much, but I don't like going to crowded places that much. So, even if it's outdoors. Yeah, zip lines, exactly. There are also zip lines in there. So, what we're going to do instead, hope I'm not making the wrong turn, but if I am, I'll fix it later. <laughs> Yeah, she got lost with 300 people in tow in the Parc Floral, silly girl. Here's a cute sign. I like this sign. It's written in colors to attract the children's eyes, though I think it's a little high for kids. You see how high it is? And it says, Si je m'égare, je peux attendre mes parents au banc des enfants perdus situé derrière le kiosque. If I get lost, I can wait for my parents on the bench of the lost children, which is located right behind the gazebo. And if you look around, the gazebo is in that direction. So they hope that little kids, if they're not bawling, see, they tell you where the kiosk is right here. So they have those signs all around the park because it would be so easy to lose your parents in here, wouldn't it? I see different translations you're suggesting. I'll walk around this like this and turn around. Here's another peaceful area. So you have the peaceful corners and then you have the crazy corners. I mean, look at that. This is where they rent those little carts with pedals that they use to go around the park and they're working right now. Shakespeare, huh? Yeah, maybe I will, who knows? <laughs> now, in the back, in that direction, are a couple of very small gardens. One of them is called Le Jardin Insolite, the unexpected garden. And um, I filmed a video there last year when the flowers were in bloom. It's not open every day. So what I'm going to do is when I upload this replay on YouTube, I will share the link to that stroll I did in the Jardin Solide because I really want you to see it. But today it would be either closed or packed, so we're not going to go. And then there's another smaller part where they very didactic, where they take kids through different sections and they teach them about biodiversity. See how much quieter it is here? We just stepped away from the big crowds. Thank goodness. Feels safer too. Well, this would be a great place to uh, Look at these flowers, what are these? What does it say? I'm not sure the tag matches them. I don't know what they are, does anybody know? Look at this one. When the flower is closed, it's called un bouton, like a button, a bud. And when it's open, look how gorgeous. Got some pink and yellow. I don't know what it's called. Too many tags. <laughs> Too many tags to read. And when you don't have your glasses, it's challenging. <laughs> so I'm sure it's gonna bloom a lot more in the next few weeks, because this is only the end of April. This hot weather is pretty unexpected to tell you the truth. 
Or you're gonna get to see one of the little carts with pedals that families love renting here. There's one coming. It's very popular with families. They all rent that. There's a huge line. There it, there it is. It's supposed to look like those early cars from the 1900s. There was also a little train you could ride. I did that a lot with my son and his cousins. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's not working right now for obvious reasons. The reason people love the uh, Bois de Vincennes, I think, those who know it well, is because there's such diversity. You can go into a botanical garden like this one, and then you can go into wilder areas where nobody's around in the woods. You can canoe on lakes. We have four lakes, and on two of them, you can rent rowboats, little boats. You can pretend you're back in the 19th century because Napoleon the third houseman and their usual suspects, Alphand, Barrier des Champs, all these people we've talked about uh, at the Butte Chaumont, for example, develop sections of the Bois de Vincennes that are quite civilized in the English style garden. Grottoes and little waterfalls and suspended bridges, pretty much what we saw at the Butte Chaumont. And you can, you can find this here at the most famous of the four lakes, Le Lac d'Omenil the one you access from the 12th arrondissement metro line 8. Here's a great view of those pine trees I was telling you about. That's one of the few things they kept from the site when it was a military ground, military grounds in uh, 1969. Aren't they pretty? On the blue sky. We could be in California, look. What do you think, Californians? All right, let's go this way, why not? Of course, you have benches throughout the park, see people studying, reading. And again, all these pavilions that are completely empty right now, but typically would have a lot going on. You could rent one for a birthday party, I guess. How about we stroll under this one, see what happens. Oh, it's shaded. Ah, I'm glad you agree, Ellen. Just make me think of Northern California. Oh, this is cool. I have missed the Bois de Vincennes almost every day since I moved to the 17th arrondissement six months ago. It's a great neighborhood. But I'm going to tell you, when you've been used to uh, exercising and walking here for years, the Parc Monceau, even though it's gorgeous, cannot compare and cannot compete. There's a sense of freedom in the Bois de Vincennes that's very hard to get in a big city like Paris. Well, you're certainly getting your Parisian street vibes today. What do you think? Now, there's a local attraction on that corner over there. I don't know if we'll be lucky or not, but there's a famous peacock. And... Uh, Sometimes he's around, sometimes he's not. But if he isn't, I got a picture of him this week doing his thing. See how empty all the pavilions are? They're doing work on them. Look at that huge space. Let's see if Mr. Peacock is around. This is his spot. I don't see him. And if he was here, there'd be a crowd watching him. So if you come back, make sure to stop by here. Mr. Peacock, Le Pont. That's a tough word to pronounce in French because it's spelled P-A-O-N, but it's pronounced Pont, which is the same sound as in a restaurant. So don't pronounce all the letters. Where, where is he? Monsieur Peacock is not here. Well, I'll share the photo later then. You'll get to see him anyway. All right, so here we get to a wide open area after being in the quieter ones. We reach the Belvedere, and the Belvedere is the one with the great sights, great overview. How about I go up there to show you? Exercise! Bzzz.
a bit of wind. Ah, yeah, this is good. This is very good. Look at that, friends. This is the water part. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Here are the bleachers and the seats where the jazz festival and other events, musical events happen in the summer. And people sit on the other side of the water in the grass, wherever they want. Over there, that water over there, it has a lot of uh, um, nymphaeas. In the fall, it's really pretty. And I can see the blooms. There's a whole row of trees. The blooms are fading, but this is where we're going to walk anyway. You'll get to see them. And here's another entrance, you see. So if you can't get in, if it's too crowded at the main entrance we saw, just keep walking like this and you'll reach this one. There you go. All right. Let's go down this thing. Looking for Mr. Peacock one last time. I think he's taking a nap or there are too many people. Yeah, he's not there. Da, 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 da. Thanks for being here with me. I tend not to cover the most visited places in Paris, the most touristy places in Paris, the ones people know and miss. So. I'm always impressed when over 300 people show up to watch the stuff I have to show them and the places I go to. Thank you for being here. Here's the stage. You can see some kids playing. We're going to wrap up pretty soon in the next 10 minutes so I can go on with uh, club members. I need to tell you about the club if you're new and haven't heard about it. Uh, when I stopped being a tour guide a year ago, because there was no much work, I launched a business called Friends with Vero, where I continued doing what I did as a hobby for 10 years almost, which was to share Paris and France and French culture on social media. Except now I have the financial support of wonderful people I call my club members on Patreon, the Patreon website, and thanks to them I can continue sharing content for free on social media, Facebook, Instagram, practically every day. And so April this month was the first anniversary of the club. And I want to say a big thank you to all of you, over 600 of you who have uh, joined the club and helped me turn this into my job. And I love my job. So if you're considering joining the club, this week would be a good time because I will be moving to the Loire Valley very soon. And on top of sharing Paris, I will also be sharing everything that gorgeous reg region and my new city of Tours have to offer. And let me tell you, there's going to be a lot of fun content and events I will be sharing, especially with club members. So look up the club on Patreon, patreon.com slash French girl in Seattle. and you will unlock some pretty cool events and contents. Isn't that beautiful? You see that monumental fountain I was telling you about? Usually the water would be crashing down. It would be really pretty, but it's not raining right now. Wind's picking up. You're welcome. It's been my pleasure to return to Vincennes and Le Bois de Vincennes, where I'll keep walking in the second stroll, second tour. Ah, we're getting some blooms, aren't we? Look at that. This will always be my favorite green space in Paris, bar none. That's right, join the club. Thank you, Martha. If you can't afford the cost of two lattes a month, you can cancel at any time. $10 a month gets you a whole lot of extra content and you will be getting a lot of peeks into my new life if you have joined Patreon. Now next week, I've been running three 
public tours, I think, this month to celebrate the first anniversary of the club, of the Friends with Vero Club. So next week will probably be an event just for club members, actually, in Paris. I'm going to take them to another place I really love here, and it will be on YouTube. There's another good reason to join the club before next week. Okay, so I want to say thank you for joining me today. I'm going to take that down around my neck. It's so attractive. Thank you for joining me today. This virtual tour guide is very thrilled that over 300 people join for the stroll around Vincennes, the Parc Floral and the Bois de Vincennes. If you've enjoyed the tour, I have a virtual tip jar that goes towards the cost of uh, preparing for this and running this tour. It's on PayPal and all that information about the club and PayPal will be in the video notes. And eventually the replay will make it to YouTube and I'll share that link so you can see all the sections of this beautiful place. So thank you so much for joining me today. Club members, listen carefully. We are going to meet on YouTube. The link I gave you, if you lost it, it's in the private Facebook group, La Bande de Véro. Meet me in about 10 minutes. I need to set up something and get out of here. And we will continue our explorations of the Bois de Vincennes to one of my favorite corners. So merci à tous. Thank you very much. I'll switch the camera so you can take one last peek at the Parc Floral. Remember, Vincennes is a great place. You can spend a whole day here exploring the city, shopping, eating, visiting the chateau, hopefully with a tour guide, enjoying the Parc Floral, strolling in the Bois, getting lost in the Bois. Thanks, Isenia, that's very sweet. Thank you, friends. And I will see you soon, when I see you, I guess. But next week will be for club members. Thank you very much. A bientôt.